and welcome to Stats with Mia. Today we're going to be talking about missing data and we're introducing the three possible missing data assumptions. They are missing completely at random, missing at random, and missing not at random. In statistics, it's really important to look at the data that you've got. You want to visualize it, analyze it, and interpret it. But it's also really important to look at the data that's not there. And actually, it's quite common um, in lots of observational and also in some experimental settings, you can end up with a problem of missing data. And it can lead to bias and or lack of precision if you don't deal with the missing data in an appropriate way. And it was Donald Rubin who came up with this typology for missing data assumptions in this Biometrica paper from 1976. So what are the three assumptions and how are they different? Let's say that we've got this jigsaw puzzle of a bee and we're interested in the different colors that you have on each piece. So for example, um, if we look at this piece, we see mostly white pixels, whereas if we look at this piece, we see uh, some white pixels, but also some black and some yellow pixels, and so on. However, uh, Mr. Pickles over here, he's going to come and take away some of the puzzle pieces, so we're going to have some missing pieces. And he actually does this on three occasions. On the first occasion, he feels pretty spontaneous, so he comes and takes off pieces at random. On the second day, he feels a little bit lazy, so he takes off the pieces that are at the edge of the puzzle, because they're a little bit easier to take off. And then, uh, well, he also takes off this one. On the third day, he decides that he wants to look like a bee, so he takes off the puzzle pieces that um, look like the wings, and he tries to put them on so he can see if he can fly. Okay, so you can see that in each of these scenarios, we end up with some missing data, and the information that we have about the colors of the puzzle will be a little bit different. Let's set up some notation first. Let's say that yi is a vector for the p variables that you have for unit i. So for each of these puzzle pieces, we're going to have a vector that tells you information about the colors of that puzzle piece. So for example, the first entry might be how many black pixels you have, you might have how many yellow pixels you have, and so on. And you also know about the location of this piece within the puzzle. So maybe you have something that tells you the x-coordinate and something that tells you about the y-coordinate. So that's just an example of um, what our data might look like. Now, ri is the missing data indicator. So for each value of yi, you have a corresponding value that tells you whether it's missing or not. 1 if it's missing and 0 if it's observed. And then finally, you can partition your data into those that are observed and those that are missing. So that's all the notation that we need. So on the first day, Mr. Pickles took off the puzzle pieces in a completely random way. He didn't choose them based on where the puzzle pieces were or what colors they contained. It was missing completely at random. So what does it mean when the, the missing data mechanism is missing completely at random? Well, it means that the missingness is independent of the data. Mathematically, the probability of ri given the data yi is simply the probability of ri because it is completely independent of the data. So looking at the jigsaw puzzle, of course you're going to be losing some data. You're going to be losing some information, but you still have quite a good idea of the colors that you have and the proportions of colors that you have in this picture. 
Now we'll have a look at what it means when the data is missing at random, given some observed variables. On the second day, Mr. Pickles removed more of the outside pieces rather than the inside pieces. So the probability of being missing, it depends on whether you are an outside piece or if you're one of the inside pieces. And even if the puzzle piece is missing and therefore its colors are missing, you still have information about its location. So the missingness depends only on the data that we actually observe, on the location data. So this means that the probability of missingness depends only on the observed data. And in fact, the probability of missingness is the same within the outside group. And it's also the same within the inside group. So it is missing completely at random within the outside group. And it's also missing completely at random within the inside group. Now, that means that you have quite a good idea of what the missing colors are. So for example, on the outside, you see that most of the pieces are white. And because missingness is completely at random within the outside pieces, you can bet that these missing pieces are also likely to be white. So you can recover some of the missing information. On day three, Mr. Pickles took off the blue pieces because they have the wings and he wanted to pretend to be a bee. So here the missingness depends actually on the actual color of the pieces. It depends on the variable of interest. So this is an example of a missing data mechanism where it is not at random. The missingness depends on the unobserved data. So the probability of RI given the data, it's not equal to the probability of RI given the observed data because it depends on the missing data. Now looking at the puzzle, you can see that you would have quite a different understanding of what colors are present because the blue ones are now removed and you don't really have a way of recovering them. So these are the three missing data assumptions, and now we're going to look at how they might apply if you are actually analyzing data. For example, we can delve into the world of wearable devices. So these are things like the Fitbit or smartphones, which measure your physical activity. And they could be used, for example, in a study where people's step counts are measured before and after some kind of intervention. And there's lots of potential ways where you can encounter missing data here. So for example, um, the battery might die, or um, people might choose not to wear the device on days where they're feeling a little bit lazy. So how should we categorize these two possible scenarios? Let's think about the first example, so the battery dying. Well, if the battery dies in a completely random way, so it has nothing to do with the step counts or any other variables, this would be missing completely at random. However, it's more likely that there is a pattern to the missingness. So maybe the data is more likely to be missing in the evening every other day, because that's how long the battery is going to last. So if that's the case, you could investigate whether the data is missing at random given the time of the day. So if the time of the day is observed, and perhaps the missingness depends only on the time of the day, it might be missing at random. What about the second example with the lazy days? Well, that means that people are taking off their device and creating missingness on those days where they are physically less active. So the missingness depends on the data that's actually not there. Right, so it seems like missing not at random is the best assumption. However, it might be that people choose to have these lazy days when the weather is bad. So if weather data is observed and missingness 
only depends on the weather, you could assume that the data is missing at random given the weather. You might be wondering, can we know for sure what the missing data mechanism is? Well, in most real settings, the answer is going to be no. After all, we're talking about the data that's not there. But after doing a little bit of analysis and also with some domain knowledge about the setting, you can make some reasonable assumptions. And if your method of analysis relies on one of these missing data mechanisms, then it's important to do some sensitivity analyses to see how sensitive the results are to the assumption that you've made. We'll talk about that in later videos. Thanks for tuning in.